I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons, my wildlings, knights, watching Kingsguard. My Kingsguard include Brendan, Nick, Oscar, Stuart, Josephine, Ikaika, Amanda, RJ, Shad, Nicoletta, Ezra, Jennifer, Jeffrey, Sarah, Pat, and Kevin. Thank you all so much. You're the best. Welcome back, everyone, to the Fantasy Network. I am, of course, Jimmy Nuts, and today we are going to be talking about the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. It's book one in the Broken Earth trilogy. I'll kind of give my thoughts on the rest of the trilogy as I have read it towards the end, all spoiler-free. Uh, and fifth season review here will also be spoiler-free. This is a book that was among uh, the short list of books that I purchased ahead of time when I was getting back into reading. It's taken me a while to get to it, but it's one I wanted to clear out this year, the whole trilogy, and I have. And I have some feelings. I'm going to be covering really just fifth season here for the most part. The reason being is I feel like book one is the brightest spot of the trilogy. But also I think just as a standalone, like fifth season without the other two books, is one of the best books that I've read maybe ever and definitely this year. And I've cleaned out some heavy hitters this year from my TBR. So for this book to be considered, I assume probably going to land somewhere in my top five for the year. Uh, that's high praise, at least from my perspective. But for everything that's talked about with the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin, I never really knew what it was about. Um, I knew one thing, and that is that it has a second-person POV, and that's really all you ever hear. I remember mentioning the fifth season during a Chatting with Nuts episode, and actually had someone in the chat, I think it was Jake Bishop, actually a fellow booktuber, was kind of like, only thing I've ever heard is people talking about the second-person POV. And I am going to touch on the perspective choices here and how they're handled, but there's so much more to the fifth season and Broken Earth as a whole. But fifth season by itself is just such an enchanting spellbinding book that I hope that you'll give a shot maybe after hearing this review. And in its most simplest form, this is a story about a mother trying to find her daughter. But more than that, it's a world that is all one continent. But in the past was many different land masses. And it sounds like it'll soon again become that way. Ecology and environment play a massive role in the conflict and also just of the entire scene that's set in fifth season. And at the core of this earth, we'll call it, <laughs> that is going to become broken and that is going to go through a cataclysmic event, there is magic within this world and it's called orogeny. And orogeny is essentially the ability to manipulate tectonic plates, cause shifts, which can then trigger earthquakes, volcanoes, all types of things. Obviously, you can see that this is a massive power and could re really lead to catastrophe if placed in the wrong hands or is wielded inappropriately at a young age, such and such. Erosions, which are the people who use orogeny, um, are found all throughout the world. Um, it seems to be a talent that you can be born with. Um, where its origins come from, we're not quite sure here in the fifth season, um, but they are definitely looked down upon. They're considered dangerous. Uh, it seems to be pretty common practice to ostracize and even kill people who find themselves wielding orogeny, whether they want to or not. So you have a world that seems to be coming to an end. You have orogeny where you can shift tectonic plates. Father Earth is a character in himself, and he is angry, folks. And then you have a wonderful cast of perspectives here. Esson is our main character and is a mother in erosion and one of our perspectives here. This one is told in the second person perspective, uh, which... A lot of people don't have a ton of experience with, but I think N.K. Jemisin handles it very, very well here, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but she has a conflict with her husband. She has a young son and a young daughter, and obviously her husband. Um, I won't spoil anything, but there is a bit of turmoil in that marriage, to say the least, and it results in Esson having to chase down her husband and her daughter. Demaya is another perspective that we get here in the story, and she is an erosion as well, which is going to be a common theme you see from these perspectives. Uh, there's a lot of erogeny going around, and generally the people with this talent are having extremely difficult times. Uh, with Demaya, she is a child that's being casted out. That doesn't be her parents don't want her anymore. She had a mishap where she lost her temper. Um, and was being picked on, and she ended up pretty much killing a boy. I say pretty much. She almost killed the boy with erogeny, because whenever she would act out, she couldn't stop the erogeny from happening. So now she's being given away, and she's being collected by someone called a guardian, which plays a much bigger role down the road. Our last perspective is Cyanite, who is an erosion, and she is a part of what seems to be almost like a school of magic for erogeny. It's called the Fulcrum. Uh, and this is where they have kind of went out and guardians, kind of like what we saw with the Maya, go and fetch these people who are out in the world that have erogeny. And they are more structured. They are taught how to wield their power, how to resist it. What level can they go to is all based upon a ranking system, which are called rings. It's really fascinating stuff. I'd say in the fifth season, this is the thing that kind of hooked me the most. Not huge on the academy setting, but the fulcrum is just like steeped 
and mystery and of what they're doing here and what dictates what rank and um, some other really weird stuff that I'll let you figure out by yourself as you read the book. But Cyanide herself is working for the fifth ring while also still trying to find her place among all of the erosions and also in the fulcrum. I find her perspective to be very interesting. I think we get a lot more of the world building info through her, so I liked her quite a bit. As I said before, Esson's story is told from a second person perspective, the you and, and someone kind of narrating that along, which has a beautiful, rich narration uh, from what's on the page, I mean, not even just from the audiobook, which I also did find really good, but just uh, the voice that's used in that second person is so commanding and powerful. I think N.K. Jemisin, uh, commands respect from that POV and knows when to flex it and when not to. The other two perspectives are actually told from Third Person Limited, uh, which you're going to be a lot more comfortable with. Usually, uh, most readers read stories in that fashion. It seems to be the most popular. Um, but you do bounce back and forth from Third Person Perspective to a second. And I'll be honest with you, I thought it was I thought it was really well done. And N.K. Jemisin's writing, in my opinion, is effortless. It, it, it feels so smooth. I felt like I was entranced in the world and never got in the way of the story. And uh, the prose is just beautiful. N.K. Jemisin has earned my respect as a reader uh, with her writing with this. And I thought all the dialogue, everything was so good. And the second person perspective to kind of give credence to why she chose it, I think it was a wise choice. And it adds like a meta kind of contextual layer to those chapters when she uses second person to say, is she talking to Esson or is she talking to me as the reader? And it kind of creates this dilemma in your head as you're going through the story that you're not going to get from many other books. And there are tons, <laughs> tons of layers of nuance in this story. But at the end of the day, the thing that stands out about the fifth season, uh, the magic is wonderful um, or terrifying, depending on what end of it is. The world is interesting and the people are um, complicated to say the least, but it all feels like a breath of fresh air to me and very, very unique. Still having pieces like the Academy, right? Having a magic system, all these things. But, and, and also like a, a mother chasing her daughter is a tale as old as time, it feels like. But the way Jemison relays it to me is among the most unique entries in fantasy. And when I think of things that have like stuck out in my head with the things that I've read, right? Like I think First Law sticks out to me very much so. I think that Stormlight Archive stands out to me. Like things that are, I don't wanna say pillars because that puts a whole new argument on top of this, but it just feels like I haven't read anything else in this fashion with it being post-apocalyptic in a way or the apocalypse kind of about ready to happen in a very unique magic system. It just feels like it stands out on its own in the genre and it was a joy to read. And right out of the gates, like in the prologue, Jemison does something that's really beautiful and subtle uh, with her world building and scene setting. And she's talking about all the areas around the stillness. And there's like these big skyscraper type things. I don't think they actually have a name, if I can see, but they're tall, like elegant buildings with balconies. And it sounds like kind of advanced architecture, but then she also glances over uh, and, and just this really wondrous way of all the shanty towns and, and people living in the gutters. And you can see that this society has built itself up and it might even be a little bit advanced, not to like a sci-fi level, of course, but like there's a community here, there's society, but there's also a massive gap within the wealth. And then the way that's going to play out as the earth is coming to an end, right? Not the end, but an end. Uh, it's going to affect the people who are in the at-risk populations the most. And I think that that's a uh, very real thing that we can all relate to, that when natural disasters happen, it's generally the most poor um, and malnourished and all these people who are hit the hardest. And this story does inspect that uh, a lot. In the richness of the world, but these books are not thick, by the way, but she is able to get so much economy out of her sentences. Uh, simple, yet blunt statements. Uh, the world building never feels exposition-y and this this whole thing is very bleak and grim. If you're thinking this is some feel-good tale or anything like that, it's not. I mean, it's downright um, depressing at times. But the way Jemison doesn't back off some of the hard-hitting moments in this book or the trilogy uh, is, is good. I, I think that a lot of times we get the full-throttle bleakness and the full-throttle grimness, and it doesn't mean as much when those big moments land. But for her, she balances out with the humanity of our characters while then having them realize the terrors of this world and what's about to happen. Because as you can imagine, when the world's ending, people are at their worst. And all of that is inspected here to a T. So yeah, you could just read this and have, you know, what's on the surface, but you could also dig deeper into the fifth season and get more of the hidden meanings I think that Jemison was trying to get across. And for me, that was a very stimulating experience. But all of that to say that the end culminates into something that's just one of those things that I've read and I'm talking about the end of fifth season, just book one. Um, 
it's just one of those things that'll always stick with me and it's an experience that I haven't had with many other books. Recently, I feel like Hyperion was one of those books that when it came to the end of Hyperion book one, I just felt super satisfied and I kind of wanted to talk to people about it. That's what I got from fifth season. Um, an ending that culminated into some mind blowing stuff that I could not help but discuss with people. Like in my discord, I talked to Baron who is your brain on books and I know RJ's read this. Um, and I've seen their, them talk about, which is excellent. But this is a book that like stimulates a lot of different conversation, but it's also one that just lives rent free in my head, probably from now until I die <laughs> because of what Jemison was able to accomplish. Um, sometimes we get jaded as readers and I think that we've seen it all, we've done it all. And then there's a book that comes along with the fifth season that surprises you, that has a lot of mysteri uh, mysterious elements to it that you don't quite have all figured out. Or maybe you think you do. And, and maybe you're smarter than me. Maybe you figure it all out uh, by the end of the book. Uh, I had some, uh, some inklings of what was going on, but the bigger picture blew my mind. And N.K. Jemison is someone now who I think will probably read anything she releases. I think her first thing she released, I can't remember what it's called, didn't sound all that interesting to me, but we, uh, who, who Became the City or whatever it might be, the Inheritance Trilogy, I'm going to be reading all for other works. And that's based on only if I had just read Fifth Season. Now, I have read books two and three, right? Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky. But even if I had just read the Fifth Season and I never continued, I would have felt like I got my money's worth out of what she put in Fifth Season. So if you're someone that's afraid to jump into a full trilogy, honestly, you could read Fifth Season and still have a very amazing story here that's wrapped up neatly. I think book one is the best out of the three, to be honest with you, which is why I'm doing this review only for book one. Um, I think the trilogy as a whole is phenomenal. I would put it up there with all of my other favorite trilogies, Memory, Sorrow, and Thor, some of Robin Hobbs stuff, like big time trilogies, Lord of the Rings. I would legitimately put Broken Earth up there. Uh, I think it's just one of the best uh, trilogies, but specifically Fifth Season is one of the best books I've read all year. And like I said, maybe ever. I hate to be so vague, uh, but I want to keep this spoiler free because I know that this is a very popular book. I mean, there is tons of discussions about this online. It has sold a mega ton. It won the Hugo, but there's also still some people who haven't jumped into it. And I think that the second person perspective is something that keeps people on the edge. Maybe it never gets quite to the top of your TBR. Forget the perspective stuff. Uh, it might be jarring at first, but I think NK handles it with just absolute class uh, and in a masterful touch that commands respect, that commands the reader to pay attention and to be involved in the story. And whenever myself as the reader can put myself in the situation of the story and say, what would I do? Uh, all my favorite mediums have done that, like Breaking Bad. Like you wonder what you would do if you couldn't pay your medical bills and, and you wanted your family to be taken care of, right? Like those are things that you can kind of put yourself into. This is a situation that is examined through a fantastical lens with world building, with magic and everything else in between, uh, with larger than life characters and Father Earth, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still a human story. And it's one that I appreciate and one that I'm so glad that I read. Uh, the fifth season absolutely was a five-star read for me. Um, and the rest of the trilogy was great as well. But fifth season specifically stands out as just, uh, just stellar. If you've read the fifth season, let me know down in the comments what you thought of it uh, in the rest of the Broken Earth trilogy. Try to keep uh, Mark spoilers so we don't ruin it for anybody down there in the comments that's breezing by. And if you haven't read it, what are you waiting for? Go read it. I'm telling you, it's so unique and you're going to love it. And if you don't, you can always come back in the comments and tell me I'm an idiot. That's always fine too. Uh, but if you like this video, hit like and subscribe if you love this video and you want to see more content like it. Uh, there's always stuff on the channel, but there's also the Patreon down in the description that is optional, but always welcome. Shout out to all my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. And yeah, we will be reviewing more N.K. Jemison here on the channel, I am sure. And look for my top books of 2021 that'll be coming out towards the end of the year because the fifth season's, I would assume, going to crack that top five. But hey, thanks for spending your time with me today. I hope you're good. I hope you're safe. And until I see you next time, remember to always keep turning the page.